My name is Alice Long. I'm a nutrition and dietetic consultant, and we are going to be talking about nutrition and your health. In my seven years of studying nutrition and about 10 years of experience, I have learned that nutrition is very important for your health. And there are just some little mistakes that we make when it comes to eating that actually affect and worsen situations. So we will discuss in this session how you can eat healthy. We will identify the common mistakes that we make so that you don't do those again. We will discuss the consequences of poor nutrition and then we will give you a solution to what you can do. We will make them simple and easy. What is eating healthy? Eating healthy, you hear everybody says eating healthy, having a balanced diet. Well, eating healthy involves a lot of things. If we just look at uh, having a balanced diet, it means you have to eat three meals a day. They must contain common micronutrients, which means to have a balanced diet. And to make it simple, a balanced diet will just mean that when you're eating, does your plate look like this? Vegetables, is there starch, is there protein? I think we all remember this from school. We eat for bodybuilding purposes and repair. We eat for energy and we eat for protective reasons. So what that means is that we have to eat everything. We have to eat fruits and vegetables for protective purposes. We have to eat proteins for development and repair. And we also have to, to take fat and starch for energy. The question is, where do we go wrong? Because we all eat all these things every single day. The problem is we eat large portions of many things. Some people, maybe not everybody. We eat maybe too much fat in our diet, we eat too much animal protein, or we eat too much fruit, or we eat too much starch. If we can just take an example, where is too much fat? If you take foods which are fried, for example, if you take french fries, okay, a plate of chips and french fries, this is how much fat you're going to get from just a plate of chips, which is about equivalent to that. Okay, that is definitely a lot of fat. I'm not saying chips is bad. Occasionally you can have it. But when you have it regularly, you can see if you have it every day, like some people are for habit of doing that, then it means you're going to be having, for one week, you're going to be having this much fat, which I think is quite a bit of fat. And if you have that every day, every week, don't you think we're going to, of course, end up with a problem? Something else that people don't realize that we also take too much is sugar. And you can take sugar in many ways. Sometimes we take a lot of tea with a lot of sugar. We take two teaspoons of sugar, we take four or five cups of tea in a day. That's a lot of sugar. It can actually end up being a glass of sugar. But most commonly, especially among young people, teenagers, we take too much sugar in our soft drinks you know, the soft fizzy drinks. For example, this is how much sugar you're going to get in a soda. This is just 10 teaspoons of sugar in one 300 ml soda. So it means that if you're taking so much, so many sodas, even 500 ml, you're taking a lot of sugar. And in one week, it means you're going to be taking about this much sugar. So this is quite a lot of sugar, definitely. So imagine you're taking a plate of chips every day and you're taking a soda every day. Don't you think that's a bit too much? You're taking this much fat every week and you're taking this much sugar every week. That is definitely going to be a problem. Something else that I found that people take a lot is also animal protein, meat. People take too much meat in their diet. Dif different countries have different cultures where they just consume excess meat. This is how much meat you need to have in a meal. It should be equivalent to your palm size, the steak. So ideally it's about this much, but probably you find that taller people, bigger people, or males and females will have slightly different. But what happens is people will go in a place and order half a kilo of meat for one person or one kilo of meat between two people or one and a half kilos of meat. And so you end up having a large plate of meat. That is not good, definitely, because your body, let's say you're an adult, you're just repairing, you need very little. So if you take half a kilo of meat, you're going to increase 
the waste from protein, which is called nitrogenous waste, is going to be very high. Then your kidney will go into a hyperfiltration rate to try and excrete this. So if your kidney is always in a hyperfiltration rate, you can easily cause, get a kidney scar. And once you get a kidney scar, that is going to affect your blood pressure. And once your blood pressure is high and you don't control how much protein you still eat, your kidney will get damaged further. So it is very, very dangerous to eat a lot of meat. <music> Alcohol is not bad. In fact, alcohol has a benefit. But the benefit is not so much that I can tell people who do not drink to start drinking. But if you take one beer every day, you take a glass of wine every day, or you take one or two tots of whiskey every day, or brandy, that's not bad. But if you sit down and take 10 beers, and take or take a half a liter of, of hard drinks, the brandies and the whiskeys, that is too much alcohol. Long-term effects of alcohol includes cancer, uh, of the gastrointestinal system, includes liver cirrhosis, includes pancreatitis, so you can actually end up being diabetic, includes uh, hardening of your arteries called cardiomyopathy, breast cancer is also associated with excess alcohol intake, stroke and hypertension can be caused by excess alcohol intake. So we should not sit down and have 10 beers or 20 beers. It is better to take small quantities regularly than take so much in one sitting. People don't take enough fruit and vegetables. I like um, a statement that one of, uh, one of these agricultural companies came up with and it says real men don't eat vegetables until they get diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease and simply die. So why is it that men are associated with not taking vegetables and fruits? Because also it's been found that the most uh, colon cancer is very very common in men and that's actually associated with low fruit and vegetable intake. But it's not only men who don't take fruits. I have found that also women don't take fruits and children don't take fruits. Women will make sure there's fruit for their families and forget themselves. Children don't like to eat fruits. Most of the time you find that children are eating junk food. They'd rather eat the chips and the sausages. They'd rather eat biscuits and cakes rather than eat fruit and vegetables and it's always a fight to eat vegetables with children. If you find many, many, many people will complain that, oh, my children don't eat enough fruit, oh, my children are not eating enough vegetables. But most of the time you'll find that when a child is sick or an adult is sick in hospital and they're brought for fruits and vegetables, they will take it. So why is it that we have to wait to be in hospital to take fruits and vegetables? Why? It should be part of your, of your daily intake. When people serve their plates, and this is commonly, you know, m many people, they will serve rice and fill the plate with rice. Then they will either serve beef stew or meat stew or anything else. And then they'll put a little bit of vegetables. That's very common. But ideally, this is how your plate should look like. Half of your plate should be vegetables. Then the other quarter, your starch and your protein. Your meat or your beans are the proteins. If your plate is full of just starch and protein, then we cannot even say that you're eating a balanced meal, neither are you having a balanced diet. So for it to balance, we must have enough vegetables on that plate, and it should be half. However, most people, of, uh, when we do plan a meal for a client or a patient, then it will differ accordingly, but this will just be the general adult recommendations. The needs may differ, so you still may need to go see a nutritionist to give you a plan that suits your total energy requirement. Children just run to school without eating breakfast. Adults go to work without eating breakfast. It has been shown and found by researchers that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Let's reason logically. You need, you're going to work in the morning, you need more energy. In the evening, you're coming home to sleep, you need less energy. So what happens if you leave the house without 
eating anything your brain needs ready glucose for energy ready glucose from food so if you've not eaten anything it means that you don't have energy for your brain to use so the brain is going to end up using a stress hormone for energy at the end of the day you're going to feel very tired and you're definitely going to have a headache for people who get migraines that's the time you're going to get it so if you don't eat breakfast and it's been found that children who don't eat breakfast cannot actually perform very well in school they cannot handle complex mathematics and it's documented. You can ask us for, for references to give you. Just by skipping breakfast, you can actually create yourself a lot of things. You've said you can get headaches and migraines. For those who have migraines, you get very, very tired at the end of the day. And just skipping breakfast and probably staying longer hours without food, you also end up getting digestive problems where you get hyperacidity, you get gas, and you can even get constipation because if it means you're skipping breakfast, it means you're not going to meet your total energy requirement or just meet your vegetable and fruit intake for the day. And just skipping breakfast alone also creates a lot of bad habits. If you skip breakfast at snack time, you'll be definitely very hungry. It gives you room to eat junk food and anything that comes along. <laughs> If somebody comes with a plate of chips and you know how much fat there is in a plate of chips, if somebody gives you a soda, about 10 to 13 teaspoons of sugar, you're going to take the soda. If you're given a sausage and a sausage has got 25 grams of fat, each of these test tubes has 5 grams of fat. So that means 5 of them will, give you, will be in one sausage. So you are going to eat it. So ideally, when you're hungry, you are more likely to get involved in bad eating habits and eat more junk food rather than think and eat a quality meal. You can see this is what you can just get from eating a plate of chips, a sausage and a soda. And you can easily do that when you're very hungry. Yes, you may eat breakfast, two slices of bread and a cup of tea or you know, a small tiny bowl of cereal and you go. Well, that's not too bad, you ate something, but then you end up skipping meals and not eating anything the whole day. That's a common habit, especially for people in corporate and especially for top managers, and I've seen that. You take nothing for breakfast or very little, you're in meetings, you take coffee, you know, coffee, coffee, so you wait and come home in the evening and eat a large meal. That is also wrong because you have not in, had, had enough fruit, you will not have enough vegetable, you will not have enough energy intake for the day. The one meal that you're going to eat in the evening may be large, but even if you divide it into three meals a day, it's, going to, it's not going to be enough. Now, the problem here will be you're eating too much at the wrong time. And this is definitely going to interfere with your sleep and rest. Remember, in the evening, you need to eat small portion because you're going to sleep. But if you skip meals the whole day when you come home in the evening, you'll tend to have a large portion because you're, you're, you're very hungry. But when you eat a large portion in the evening, the, the problem there would be the amount of meat or amount of animal protein that you will have. At night, when you go to sleep, your body needs to rest. And during rest, when the body is at total rest, the body produces hormones for repair and growth. This only happens when the body is at total rest. When you eat your large portion of food, especially your animal protein, it is going to be digested up to 7 to 8 hours. So it means that 7 to 8 hours in the night, you're digesting. The body is not resting, so it is not producing hormones for repair and growth. When you wake up in the morning, you will be tired because you're not, you're not well rested. Then you have to go to work. And the children have to go to school. Don't you think it is a lot of stress and pressure on everybody? And of course, your pressure, your your stress levels will be high because yeah, there are also the normal pressures of the day. So it is important to eat your small portion in the evening and your large portion for breakfast. <music> Depending on where you come from, you find that most people will probably just eat carrots and spinach as their main vegetables, or they eat cabbage as their main vegetables, or they eat just potatoes as their main starch, or they eat 
chapati or naan or ugali so just the same thing every day what happens is every food there are so many variety of nutrients in all the foods there are phytochemicals in all in all foods so it is important to eat a variety if we just take the example of an orange and a, and a banana the banana gives you potassium very important for your blood pressure control very important for your electrolyte balance um, the orange, on the other hand, is going to give you vitamin C, which is very, very important for healing and your immune system. So you can't just eat banana. You can't just eat the orange only. You need to eat a variety of fruits. And that, that was just an example. When it comes to vegetables, yes, there is all this, uh, you know, thing, uh, information going around. Yes, carrot is going to protect you from cancer. Or, or, or spinach juice is good for you. But all vegetables are good for you. And if you make a variety it will be good for you because you can't just take carrots every day neither can you just take spinach juice every day you need to have a variety of these foods so please you need to analyze yourself keep a food and activity diary for a week find out breakfast lunch dinner snack record everything you eat for a week and then analyze that am i eating the same thing every day Am I eating tea and bread every day or am I eating just cereal every day for breakfast? So it is important to eat a variety of food. Are you taking enough water? Well, I, I take a lot of water every day because water is very important for you. Have you ever wondered why you really must take water? Because that's what many people think. I take a lot of tea, so I don't need to take water. I take a lot of coffee, I don't need to take water. I take a lot of juice, I don't need to take water. That's what everybody says. But you actually need quality water. Quality water means it needs to be clear water, not juice or not caffeine. Anything with caffeine is a diuretic, so it makes you actually lose fluid. Why do you need water? Water is used for circulation. Water is used for transportation of nutrients. Water is used to help your organs to, to, excrete, um, to excrete waste efficiently. So you need water for your kidney to function very well. During the day, we lose a lot of water. We lose water through our skin. We lose water through sweating. And if you sit in a room that's lit the whole day, you sit in a room that has a fan the whole day, air conditioning, those are things that cause dehydration. There are some studies that associated certain cancers to dehydration. So you need to have enough water. Water would definitely be recommended according to your age and according to your weight. Ideally, most literature say between 6 to 8 glasses of water. That's about 1.5 to 2 liters of water. But really the needs differ. There are some conditions that require a fluid, fluid restriction, so you cannot take as much water. When you're above age 55, your kidneys are not as efficient. Also, uh, there are all this information going around that, you know, water therapy. Wake up in the morning, take four glasses of water. In the evening, take four glasses of water. That I personally would not recommend because... If you take too much water, it's also going to interfere with your food intake. So you're not going to be able to take food. Yes, the water therapy is used as a weight management program, but it is actually not sustainable. Water, because it's used for excretion and transportation and circulation, all those things are going on in your body every single second. So you should not take water now and then avoid it the whole day and take it later. Try to distribute your water intake the whole day and train yourself to take water. Yes, there are people who don't take water. So if you don't take water, don't wake up the next day and start taking eight glasses of water. Train yourself to take some water. If you take two glasses a day, go to four glasses. Take four glasses until you're comfortable. Then you can increase to six glasses. As long as you have six glasses, that's not too bad because you're also having other fluids. But don't take too much coffee and say you had enough water. Don't take too much tea and say you had enough water. It is not the same. with fashion don't do what everybody's doing because it's what's going on like right now these people are taking so many multivitamins one out of every three women we've interviewed is taking a multivitamin either calcium or a magnesium or, or something why are you taking the vitamins because they can actually end up being toxic for example you find that somebody's taking you know like maybe up to four or five tablets a day they're taking calcium and magnesium they're taking a vitamin a they are taking something for uh, their hair, 
they're taking something for their skin and that becomes in three four months it means they are taking something like this this definitely is going to become toxic so don't just take vitamins because everybody's taking vitamins don't remove carbs from your diet because everybody's doing that you need to have a reason if it's recommended by a doctor no problem or by a dietitian no problem but i actually don't know any condition that requires you to avoid carbohydrates for example or if you take too much fruit everything needs to be in moderation We cannot talk about nutrition without talking about exercise. Exercise is so important. It has to be part and parcel. It's not only people who need to lose weight that need to exercise or people who are preparing for sporting activities. No, everybody needs to exercise. Exercise has to be planned and implemented. And it means it's, it's an activity that requires you to use your major muscles, let's say arms and legs, requires motion for prolonged period of time. So we are talking about jogging, running, you know, moving and of course not sleeping so exercise is very important because it improves blood circulation improves oxygen and your lung capacity when you exercise regularly you also prevent different conditions exercise can be prescribed with everything if you came to me you're not sleeping well i will say you exercise if you wanted to gain weight i will say exercise you have constipation part of it will will be for exercise <music> The reason why Jehovah created day and night is because you work during the day and you sleep at night so that when you wake up the next day you're as good as new, you're refreshed. So resting is very important. If we sleep late most of the time, we're always going to be tired and definitely we are going to develop uh, some conditions related to fatigue. And it doesn't matter, you can eat healthy, but if you're not having enough rest, we're not going to actually um, make a very big difference in our health. So all these things have to be done hand in hand. We have to eat healthy, exercise regularly, and have enough rest for us to say you're practicing some good habits. We hope that you have been able to identify some of the mistakes that you make, if at all, so that you can make changes. But before we go on to tell you about the solutions to these mistakes that we make, we want to discuss the consequences of poor nutrition. I'm sure you know some, but what are the ones that actually can really cost you a lot of problems? Let's start by just fatigue, just getting extremely tired. You always, in the evening, you're tired. In the morning, you're tired. You do not even want to get out of bed. If you had a choice, you'd just sleep and not go anywhere. It's because of the way you eat. If you don't eat breakfast, you're always going to be very tired in the evening. If you eat too much in the evening, you're always going to be tired in the morning. Dehydration causes fatigue, and especially for those people who always sit in an air-conditioned room with lighting the whole day, you're likely to get those problems. Some headaches are also because of, uh, of uh, dehydration or poor nutrition intake. Like, if you don't take breakfast, most of the time you'll get a headache. Especially people who suffer from migraines, they will definitely get headaches at the end of the day. And if you're always tired, definitely you also get, end up getting a headache or discomfort in your head. Before you take a painkiller, please analyze why you're having the headache and treat the problem. Taking medication sometimes is just treating the complication, but you haven't actually solved the problem. So let us treat the problem so that we can avoid taking so many medications that we actually may not need. Hyperacidity is a problem of eating either too much food at, in one sitting or taking too much fat in your diet or just skipping, staying very long hours without food. And it's always going to become a problem. And of course, too much acid always can cause now other problems like ulcers and so many other things. So please check. Another problem of not eating healthy is constipation. I know a lot of people who do not go to the toilet for long call for days and they don't think it's a problem. In fact, when you tell people you need to go to the toilet twice a day, they think, oh, you mean that happens? Ideally, you need to go to the toilet twice a day for a long call. It needs to be, you need to go to the toilet for one minute and it's out. Not if you go there and you have to sit there for very long and you have to push out, then we have a problem. If you go to the toilet, there are, you, you can know your digestive health by just the type of stool that you form. There are like seven types of stool that is shown in this chart. There is type 1, there is type 2, there is type 3, type 4, type 5, type 6 and type 7. 
The first type is very little stools. Traditionally, people call them like goat stools. That is not good because it means that you're not emptying everything actually. Type two, the stool is formed, but that's very, very hard and can actually cause a tear. Type three also is very hard and can cause a tear, but type two is probably worse. Type four would be the best. And if you eat healthy, eat three meals a day, have enough fruits and vegetables and drink enough water, you will form your stool easily. You will go to the toilet every day. Please note that if you don't go to the toilet for three days, that is chronic, that is chronic constipation. And if you don't even go, if it is even longer, it's even more dangerous. Constipation is very dangerous and can cause ex headaches, can cause body odor, uh, even foul, you can get foul breath by having, a, by having constipation. You can get a kidney problem. Some people actually get depression because of that. And the consequences of constipation is countless. Yes, it is one thing that usually is ignored, but please check. Your children don't eat enough fruits. If they're not forming a good stool, like we have said number four, then we have a problem. If you as an adult is not going to the toilet for a long call and is going after one every other day, that is a problem. So you need to, you need to manage your diet so that you can be able to form stool because those are toxins that must be excreted every day. Your digestive system is the most important organ in your body. Of course, all the other organs are important, but this is where all the digestion takes place, absorption of nutrients and excretion. If your digestive system is not functioning efficiently, we have a major problem. Let's just look at the digestive system. Your digestive system is 6.5 meters, if you can see the length. It is attached to all your organs. This digestive system feeds the body, in short. So it needs to be taken care of very well. Some of the problems you'll have by having poor digestive health is hyperacidity, gas, and constipation. Can you imagine that most of these conditions like diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure can come because of eating poorly? So there is no two way about it. You eat badly, you get these problems. You don't eat properly, you cannot manage these problems. But there's one thing that everybody likes to do. And maybe I also did it before I learned so much about nutrition. We all get our own solutions. Let's just say you're taking maybe um, just five tablets a day because one of them you're treating headaches twice a day in the morning and in the evening. You're taking a laxative, you're taking an antacid, antacid drug and something else. Those five tablets a day is going to become 150 tablets in a month. In four months, you're taking about 600 tablets, and that is about this much. Don't you think it is cheaper for you to eat healthy and prevent all these conditions rather than taking medications? Taking drugs without eating properly is like washing your hands and drying them in the dark. What we need to do to live long and prevent all these conditions, we should be free of toxins. What are these toxins that we consume every day? We take a lot of salt in our diet. We take a lot of sugar in our diet. We take a lot of fat in our diet. So we need to reduce the amount of salt we take. If you're the kind of person who takes their food and adds their salt before we take it, you need to stop that. That is very dangerous and can actually lead to high blood pressure. Salt can cause high blood pressure. You need to reduce the fat in your diet. If you take chips, a lot of fried foods, sausages, baked foods with a lot of fat, we need to reduce consumption of those foods. We have to be realistic. You can take those things occasionally, but not all the time. Sugar, if you take like soft drinks every day, you need to reduce that. Some studies have shown that if you take a fizzy drink every day, you actually have a very high risk of getting diabetes. So let's reduce the sugar, the salt, the fat, and last but not least, we can reduce the amount of medications we take. Rehydration, take enough water, Make sure every day you take between six to eight glasses, depending on also your recommendation if you already have a medical condition. Distribute this water the whole day and let it be quality water. Yes, you can take your juices, you can take your tea, you can take your coffee, but let's learn to take quality water. And the, what, the amount of water does not change with, with the weather conditions. Whether it is hot or cold, you still lose the same amount of water. So you still need to take water. The third thing we have to do is we have to eat healthy. What is eating healthy? We have discussed that. 
but it involves a few things. It involves the timing of meals. What, when should you eat your large portion? When should you eat your small portion? You need to eat more food when you're going to work or school, and that is in the morning. You need to eat less food in the evening so that you can be well rested in the morning when you get up. Uh, eating healthy also involves eating a variety of foods. Don't just eat the same thing every day. Please keep a food and activity diary and write down everything you eat for a whole week and analyze that. Find out how many types of vegetables do you eat, how many types of fruits do you eat, how many types of starches do you eat. If you find that you're eating the same thing day in, day out, then you need to change. We had discussed earlier how your plate should look. Your plate should have half vegetables, a quarter starch, and a quarter protein. And we also know that there are some people who may need more starch than the other. So, Yes, uh, you can do this for now, but you also may need to get nutrition advice so that you're not also eating too much or you're eating too little for your body type and for your body weight. So don't just heap your plate with starch and then a little protein and forget the vegetables. Always put your vegetables first. That way, even for people who want to lose weight, it makes weight loss very, very easy. Eating healthy also involves the way you cook your food. We cook our foods differently, and most of the time we have to add spices, salt, and fat in our food. Well, spices is not bad. Salt could be bad if you add a lot of salt. So you need to make sure you add very little salt in your food, because you really, you can't train yourself to take less salt in your diet. But most of the time, we also make the mistake of using a lot of fat in our food. Um, let me show you something. This is how much fat we get from half a kilo of lean steak. This is home experiment. We took lean steak, boiled it in a lot of water. When it was cooked, let it cool, remove the fat that had collected at the top, and we put it in a glass. And you can see that's quite a bit of fat there. But if this is lean steak, how about regular meat? We also did that to chicken. And you can see this is how much fat we got from half, a, half chicken without skin. So animal protein already have fat, so we don't need to add any fat to it. The fat is used to, of course, enhance flavor. Um, in vegetables, yes, we need fat because your green vegetables have got your fat-soluble vitamins. So in your proteins, don't add fat. Just add the spices. It will still be tasty. In your vegetables, especially green vegetables, you need to add some oil because of fat-soluble vitamins. So most of the time, people steam the vegetables and fry the meat. You should fry the vegetables and steam the meat. We have natural foods. That, like you get from your garden and you eat, like your potatoes. We have processed foods that go through manufacturing and that reduces the nutrients. Most of the time, yes, we have the ones that reduce the nutrients of food and we have the ones that improve the nutrients of food. And then we also have heavily processed foods that uses a lot of preservatives to increase the shelf life. So we need to eat less processed foods and eat more natural foods. You're better off taking your maize and taking it to the portion meal or you're better off eating the corn before it goes through the processes of making it into flour. You're better off taking your sweet potatoes instead of taking your white bread. So you need to eat whole meal instead of processed food. Your brown rice is better than your white rice. Remember we talked about having enough fiber also improves your bowel movement. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Those meant a lot of things. That meant that if you eat fruits regularly, you will keep away from the doctor. So more fruits in your diet. You should eat between three to five fruits a day. And always the best time to eat the fruit is at snack times and not with a meal. It's not a dangerous practice to eat with a meal, but the best time would be to eat it alone when it is not competing with other nutrients. Then that way you utilize it better. In addition to eating healthy, we also have to exercise. What is exercise? Exercise involves an activity that is planned and implemented we have to use our major muscles like walking, jogging, running, and it should last long, maybe continuous for 45 minutes to one hour. If you can't make time for exercise, be ready to make time for illness by Edward Stanley, Earl of Derby, 1873. So exercise is important. I don't think you want to make time for illness later. So let's be active. One way I keep my, my fitness going through the year is I actually train for marathons. I train for walks. Like, you know, in, in Kenya, there are so many walks. We have a diabetes walk. We have a detail heart run. We have the standard chartered marathon. We have the marathon in the national, in the park, you know, the lower marathon. So there are so many. We have the, the uh, cancer walk. We have the HIV walk. So if you always train for the walk and maybe improve, you tell yourself, 
I'm going to do 10 kilometers, I will do it at a shorter time this time. Then at least that keeps you going through the year. Because you shouldn't exercise for one month and then sit for six months or eight months. Exercise needs to be a daily activity. But I also say don't exercise every day and don't go and exercise really, really hard. If you get tired and you can't continue. Exercise, if you're trying to just maintain good health, three days a week is fine. Or three to five days a week is okay. So remember, if you don't want to make time for illness, please plan to get some time to do exercise. Last but not least, we must have enough rest. At the end of a long day, full of activity, let's say school or work, or think of what goes on during the day, you must be able to sleep and wake up refreshed. And the best way of doing that is make a habit of not eating a lot of food in the evening. Eat small portion, and especially I would encourage you to avoid your animal protein, your meat or your chicken, because these are digested for seven to eight hours. They interfere with your sleep. As long as, as, there's, as long as there's digestion, the body is not going to be rested. So avoid animal protein at night. Go to bed early. You will agree with me that at the end of the day, we all must have enough rest and we must wake up in the morning refreshed. So make your sleeping time as important as going to work in the morning so that you get home you eat your dinner and you know you have to sleep no matter what because if you don't get enough sleep we all know the consequences so let's make a habit of enjoying the sleep as the last thing that nobody can rob us of nutrition is the foundation to good health I have seen people feel good and feel better by just making a few changes in their eating habits, just like eating breakfast and eating less dinner. So you need to make the conscious effort to eat healthy. We have identified the common mistakes in nutrition and we have also discussed the solutions. You really don't have to go out of your way to do anything out of ordinary. Just identify your problem and correct it. If you need further information, you're welcome to contact us or visit the dietitian or a nutritionist nearest to you. For those people who have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, or certain chronic conditions that they're taking medication, nutrition is going to improve the situation and will help you control it better. So please make an effort to get nutrition education and nutrition advice. Just remember that good nutrition is ageless. So eat healthy and live longer. Healthier choices, longer lives. Thank you very much.